Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Retired Astronaut, and I am your host, Patamani. Today's subject, dreaming and dreams. Very uh, close to my heart, this subject, and I've been wanting to do this episode for a while, and today, just boom, I'm going to do it, and made some notes, and have new inspiration to share. So, let's start with... Um, what happens a lot of times people will, um, in my, in my social network, like my post a dream or, you know, ask for, you know, advice about a dream. I've even recently saw someone say dreaming was a waste of time, which was very surprising because it was, uh, it is a, a talented artist. And I thought to myself, you've got to be kidding. Dreaming is the best. And I've been a very powerful dreamer since I was a small child. I've always had um, really intense dreams, uh, really enjoyable dreams. I think some of the the first dreams I remember when I was very young was was swimming in the water, being uh, like a dolphin, and um, for for throughout my childhood, just really really enjoying dreams and even having uh, in high school. I remember I had a prophetic dream, simple, you know, very simple dream. Um, a classmate of mine that had um, had left school. I had a dream that she had returned, and she I went to school the next day, and she she had she had come back, and she had returned, and she was in the class, and she was in the dream. She was wearing pink. In the classroom, she was wearing pink as well. It um, it definitely caught my attention, and so as I became older, and uh, my mid twenties, when I started having some more powerful experiences of consciousness, series of awakenings and initiations into um, a different realm of being and existing, different levels of understanding reality, and um, some powerful dreams were a part of this. One in particular, a phoenix dream, in which uh, I was consumed, I was calling out to the phoenix, and I was consumed by flame, um, and the dream perspective was, was coming down um, from above into my body, and um, I had another, another dream during this period, very powerful dream. It took, um, now this would have been in 1995 when I had that dream, and there are what I understand now many layers and layers to dreams. So there were, there were things within the dream that would over time come to pass, but it was in the summer of 2016 that I looked up, I was with my family, we were at a reunion in, in Minneapolis, we were playing a game, and my sister was running, my incredible athlete, and my sister, someone I've, I've loved, dearly and she was running across the field and she was she was in a state of joy and bliss and being playful and fun and and she's been, god she's so talented and um and in that moment i realized it was that was the dream it was sort of this last layer of of that dream that i'd had back in 1995 so it took you know 21 years for this dream these, these layers of this dream to to come to pass so dreams are Dreams are fascinating. Dreams um, allow for time travel. Um, you're stepping outside of, you know, this, this you know, dimensionality. Um, the spirit is free of the body, so able to, to view events. Um, I'm a digital video editor among my many talents as a media producer, so it reminds me of that. If any of you have ever done any digital editing, it's very much like that. You have a bin of, you know, dream material that are, are your clips and your footage, and you know, you're you're in your dream time. You're maybe laying them across timelines and 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 moving them around. And we have a lot of impact on that dream content. So uh, in my my mid to late twenties, I, I in the seeking of a teacher to help guide me along uh, along my spiritual path. Blessed with a, uh, a friend and psychic. Who uh, happened into our happened into this cafe where I worked? Convinced the owner 
to um, allow her to set up in the library and do readings once a week and offered free free readings to everyone on staff as a, as a means of promotion. And, and so she did do some reading for me, but she, from the get-go, just sort of identified me like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have you read for me. And I'm like, have me read for you. And so she really believed, uh, did, ha had from the get-go strong belief in my own psychic gifts that, that I had as well, hadn't really talked about with, with people yet, and she gave me some tips on how to develop them just by practicing, and also really encouraged me to begin really, you know, working with my dream material. She uh, gave me a book to get me started, uh, which involved a lot of, you know, uh, journaling, um, a lot of um, examining the, the symbolism, um, and really working with the dream material. During that time, I learned things such as dream incubation, where every night in, my, in the falling asleep, I'm asking a question. In this instance, I was attempting to find a friend who, this is kind of pre-internet, so I was attempting to find a friend who had moved out to the West Coast, and I wanted to find him. And through, uh, it, took, it took some weeks for me to decipher um, where he was and to make the right movement in order to find him. And it, it meant my traveling to New York City and a friend of mine uh, who I just kind of called up to, to say hello and they're saying, hey, you know, Nicholas is looking for you. I have a postcard from him. He's living in Portland, Oregon, and he really wants to find you. And then I end up moving to Portland, Oregon. I end up living on the West Coast for 13 years, um, having incredible, incredible experiences too. Uh, so the dream material is powerful and, and can really help us heal trauma and uh, reimagine our futures. Um, what, I, uh, what I was also learning during, during this time, and this would have been like the mid late 90s, uh, also coming from the material of Carlos Castaneda and the teachings of Don Juan. And the, the, the premise of that being that uh, Don Juan speaks to the training of the Nawals, uh, the sorcerers, that their two main methods of teaching was to teach dreaming and to teach stalking. And, and it's a different use of the word stalking than how, you know, how we might use it in contemporary terms. It has more to do with um, seeking power, not just for power's sake, but almost like how you might in a video game, you know, go and get like that pellet that gives you a little power up. You know, it's sort of seeing, um, you know, both experiences and objects and, and, and um, a, you know, challenging one's self um, and uh, going moving beyond our fears as a means of gaining power, facing our fears and asking you know for allyship from those things. Um, experiences could be animal spirits um, to to uh, work with us, to you know stand beside us and and, and help uh, guide and, and protect us as we move through these realms. So Many, many experiences, uh, great experiences, you know, in my 20s. And then by my 30s, um, I, I want to say that the journaling was very helpful because my perception at that time was I was learning the language of my subconscious and the, the symbolism. It could, because if, I were to, if I'm to dream of a dog and you dream of a dog, it may not have this, the same meaning. If, say, you know, you've been attacked by a dog and, and that represents something scary for you and all my associations with dogs have to do with, like, the universal understanding, which has more to do with companionship and loyalty. So the, the content is very personal. It speaks directly to us. There is some universality to some of the dream content, so it's, it's perfectly fine to... Um, you know, uh, explore, for instance, mythology and folklore, um, different cultures and languages, because uh, the dream content can sometimes be in a different language, you know, that maybe your ancestors spoke um, that you no longer, you know, uh, can comprehend and need to do a little, a little research. Like I've, I've dreamed in uh, Hebrew, for, for instance, you know, and I had to like go to the library and look up some of the symbols that, that came to me. So, um, yeah. So the first of all, you know, there's that there's that intention uh, while while falling asleep of you know really affirming the the fact of memory. I am remembering my dreams. I'm good at remembering my dreams. Having a journal or like a like a recording device nearby to when you wake up, get the content out as soon as possible. You know to preserve it. There are other helpful things too that I learned. Um, 
you know, maybe I'll wake up and I'll journal as much as I remember. And then I might, you know, lay back down and I might spend some time like turning on all sides and, and because we turn as we sleep, then, you know, I might, I might get more content on this side or on my stomach or on my back. And then, you know, I can continue to journal and then work with the content and um, activate the, the dream symbols and this content in our waking life. So with the, uh, so I was having these really, uh, I, I started off my West Coast adventure and I, and I got to a point with dreaming where I was no longer journaling. And because uh, I, I just was sort of, my sense, my sense for many years was, was this waking up and going, aha got it. You know, I know what the dream's all about. I do not need to write it down. I do not need to analyze it. I'm just going to, you know, activate it or look for it in my waking life. And oftentimes it would be more, more often than not, because you, everyone has prophetic dreams. We, we, we do, we dream, we dream ahead. We see things that are coming and these aren't futures that we can, you know, that are, that are set, you know, these are futures that we can actually impact some more than others. You know, you might have, yeah, some people, their lives are saved, you know, by paying attention to dreams. Um, oftentimes for me though, they they were, the content was kind of mundane. Um, you know, it might be something that happens in the workplace. Oh, I know so-and-so is going to walk into the office and they're going to make the X announcement, announcement at this time. And, you know, I'm sitting there in the room and I'm not shocked because I had a dream about the, you know, the night before. Um, and so I, existing like this for, for many years, you know, paying attention to my dreams off and on, I think one of the more powerful dreams that I've had in uh, recent years was when um, the time when my dearest, closest friend, Rohana, uh, crossed over uh, two nights before before this happened. Um, she came to me in a dream. She kind of marched through my dream. And she made her presence really well known. She, she had on this... <laughs> she had on, like some really colorful clothing and she was like making noise and I'm like, Hey, and then when I, you know, two days later, her daughter-in-law reached out to say that she had, she had to transition to the other side. And, um, I was like, yeah, yeah, she came, she came to, and, and informed me. Um, she had a, she had a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. So there was a period of many years where, um, she was, she became a teacher in a different way. She became a teacher of mine in being in the now. Uh, because when we would sit together, uh, she really couldn't, she could, knew who I was and she couldn't really remember like where I lived or what, you know, my work or what I was involved with, whatever. So we were always having these, these conversations as if they were for the very first time. And, um, so that until recently, and then last spring, I met a really wonderful, um, traditional, uh, African healer in the single mat tradition. Um, and we just wonderful community here in, in New Orleans and I'm really such a blessing to make contact with with their community and in um, in meeting in meeting with um, Kulu um, the 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 teacher who's you know, trained and you know in Africa and, 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 and does really remarkable healing work here locally um, he, he encouraged me, you know, you're, you know, really, you know, I'm getting this message. You need to start journaling again. You need to start journaling these dreams. So last summer I started to practice again, not as diligent as recently. Um, recently I became recently a uh, new inspiration in the form of uh, author and dream archeologist, Robert Moss. I uh, was trying out uh, Gaia.com, the, the online, um, the online digital, you know, video format. And there were some really, really great long form interviews with Robert where he talks about his life. He talks about his work. He's an accomplished author. He uh, now is um, very focused on dreaming and he holds workshops all over the world. His writing, he's a storyteller. He's a wonderful, he's a wonderful, very playful storyteller. Real wonderful character. Um, I just finished uh, his other book, The Boy Who Died and Came Back, and I'm just beginning this one. And uh, getting this today at the library, I was like, okay, I need to, I need to make that video um, about dreaming. And uh, so here I am. Um, let's see. One, one of the standouts here as I, as I move into the wrap-up with, uh, with Robert's work 
you know, um, the encouragement of practice, practice, you know, practice, practice, but also awareness. He, he's really wonderful at linking dreaming with conscious living. So in terms of, in terms of practice, you know, and, and, you know, we've, we've heard that phrase, you know, to become a master of something, you must practice it for 10,000 hours. And he kind of puts that into a context where he's like, you know, while you're asleep, you can be practicing. And um, while you're awake and living very consciously and moving about the world in a very receptive, lucid state, you can also, you know, dream in another, dream in another fashion that is in alignment more with indigenous teachings. And that's one thing about his work that I really, really love is that he connects it to many indigenous traditions of dreaming and how communities dreaming together, supporting one another, um, learning, you know, like uh, sometimes it's about survival, sometimes about, you know, knowing where, where the game is and so, you know, or for the hunt. You know, sometimes it's about, you know, warnings about, um, uh, you, danger that's coming. You know, there's a wonderful, there was a wonderful section on, uh, you know, a lot of dreamers warning Mont Montezuma about the arrival of the conquistadors and that those messages being um, ignored. So also the power of dreaming in community and supporting each other with, with, you know, um, both recording our dreams, sharing our dreams and looking at the content for how we might activate them in our, in our waking life in order to live beyond um, these limiting concepts of the self that are often, that we accept from other people, um, that we no longer need to as we want to uh, dream our lives uh, in, in an in a unlimited uh, imagination, you know, without, without boundaries. I'm going to push against the frame here, without boundaries. And uh, really live the the story, the the mission, the purpose of our lives. Like, why are we here? Why are we incarnated into you know this physical form and, and in this realm? As a result of this this dreaming and and Robert's work is fascinating. I, I found like the this the each chapter is very short, and it was a nice story. Oftentimes about maybe a workshop that he led. Um, and I would notice that he would make some reference, you know, because he might be traveling to some part of the world and he might have to do his big on research, which I love too, historical research. So he loves science, you know, as well as alchemy and magic. And, and um, so he, you know, he, he does his homework. And so if he's, he feels, you know, called to a certain region, you know, he needs to study up on the folklore, of the, you know, or the mythology of that region so he can really connect with the material. He leads groups in uh, groups, group dreaming. And group dreaming is something that I that I had also became that also uh, Carlos Castaneda and Don Juan um, uh, speak to in, in in their adventures, and something I have successfully done with friends. It's uh, it's not hard. It really it's really just a matter of intention of choosing to dream with another person, setting that attention intention, and then. Um, you know, sharing sharing content when you see the other person in the dream, and oftentimes for me, it's uh, so far it's been pretty simple. Where um, uh, at least in one instance, a friend of, a friend of mine is back in I want to say like this would have been like ninety seven, ninety eight, and we, we were doing this. We were setting this intention every every night to dream together, and it took about a month or so, you know, before before it happened. And then one day, I came to uh, I, I come to work, and she uh, and I'm like, hey, I had, I had a dream last night, and you know, she's like, all right, well, tell me what it was. And I told her the dream content. And she's like, yeah, that was the dream. And um, it had to do with, like, her boyfriend and some different stuff. So, um, yes, this is real. It happens. We can do this. And it is by far one of the most, I think, amazing and powerful things um, at our disposal, so ready and available for us to explore and enjoy both as an inner journey, as an outer journey, you know, um, you can use dreaming for health and, and you know, and, and diagnosis and to actually seek out healing or to know about things before they may happen, you know, things that might um, be good for you to do in terms of exercise or diet. It really depends on the intention that you set as you're falling asleep and the retaining of the content that comes up and remembering, remembering recording and activating so that's what i love about robert he's like if you see it in the dream and you recognize it maybe it's a place or a person or some kind of thing activated in the real activated in the real life
real world, you know, I say real, activated in this dream time, another, it's yet another, this reality is yet another dream time. Um, and with that, I want to wish all of you in this uh, new Gregorian calendar, new year, the happiest of, of 2018, the happiest of years for you. And may all of your greatest dreams come true. Namaste. Thank you, everybody.